Hello and welcome again. So now we are on page 144 USMLE step 1 2021 microbiological section where we're revising the USMLE microbiology section and we are on page 144. So in previously we have discussed about this uh, uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now moving forward to another uh, if you remember this diagram where we have talked about this gram negative bacilli which, which has been divided into the uh, true bacilli there was a uh, coca and bacilli coco bacilli raw uh, crawl broads and true bacilli among their bacilli we have divided on the lactose ferment as a lactose fermenting and non-fermenting organism in non-fermenting we have discussed about this pseudomonas uh, group now let's discuss about this salmonella sigella groups so this all are gram negative bacilli that are lactose non-fermenter so they are pale in color and even that pseudomonas was oxidase positive but this salmonella sigella these are oxidase negative so we will discuss about the gram negative bacilli that are lactose non-fermenter and oxidase negative that is salmonella sigella so let's move on so we are <clears throat> over here page 144 okay then talking about the salmonella and sigella this both are the gram negative rods that you have clear then also we have come to know they are non lactose fermenter and also they are non oxidase positive so they are oxidase negative test actually okay so salmonella and sigella both salmonella and sigella are gram negative rods non lactose fermenter oxidase negative and can evade the gi tract bim cell of the pr passages so they can infect they can evade our GI tract the M cell actually of the PR patches so they will wear the PR patches through the M cell and then causes the infection they are our salmonella typhi they can be divided into salmonella typhi which cause enteric fever or say typhoid fever then salmonella uh, species except typhi that cause gastroenteritis local gastroenteritis and sal sigella species which is actually causing invasive diarrhea or say bloody diarrhea and they are limited only to the intestine but this can even spread to your whole body goes to the systemic circulation and cause you to the disease okay so let's uh, discuss about that according to the reserve if you see about the reservoir salmonella species like typhi and non typhi they are present on human like salmonella typhi is only present in human whereas salmonella species other than typhi is human and animal and sigella is only on human spread according to the spread they can spread hematogenous spread so they can spread to the blood they can spread to the blood but this is, is only cell to cell spread so once sigella infection is there it can spread from one cell to another cell only they cannot come to the systemic circulation and cause the disease whereas enteric fever that is salmonella and other salmonella species also can spread to the blood there is no hematogenous spread in the sigella about the H2S production, this is the gas that is produced by the bacteria. Salmonella species, this produce the H2S, whereas Sigella doesn't. Coming to about the flagella, this Salmonella have flagella, that's, that's why they become motile, they are motile and they are called the Salmon swim. So they both Salmonella typhi and other Salmonella species will have the flagella, whereas Sigella are non-motile and they don't have this flagella. Talking about the virulence factor, since they are the, all are the gram negative bacteria, obviously the endotoxic shock endotoxin will always be there. So they will all have endotoxin. Except that the virulence factor of Salmonella has endotoxin as well as this VI capsule. Salmonella, other than Typhi, have endotoxin virulence factor. Coming to the Sigella, these are since gram negative, they will have endotoxic activity. They will lead to the endotoxic shock. Also, they have sigla like toxin, which is an exotoxin, called, so called the enterotoxin. So, sigella species have both endotoxin and exotoxin, and this exotoxin is enterotoxin, also called the sigatoxin. We have discussed this sigatoxin mechanism in our uh, exotoxin, where we have talked about the protein synthesis inhibitor, like there was elongation factor inhibition by pseudomonas and diphtheria, then there was sigatoxin and entero, uh, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. That was due to this sigatoxin toxin mechanism that inhibit the protein synthesis so this has both endotoxin and exotoxin activity talking about the infectious dose how much dose is required for the infection if you talk about salmonella they require a high inoculum because they are resistant they are susceptible to the acid they can easily kill in your stomach so they require high inoculum is required because they are still acid level sometime if a person have any 
medication like proton pump inhibitor or antacid so they have reduced the gastric ph in that case in that case low low dose can also cause infection but in a normal people who are not on antacid who are not on proton pump inhibitor like pantoprazole or lansoprazole then this high inoculum is required to cause infection to develop typhoid fever or salmonella mediated enteritis or gastric infection or gastroenteritis so the inoculum infectious dose for salmonella and sal all salmonella species are high whereas sigella there is only very few load there's a low number is very small inoculum required to cause us the infection that bloody diarrhea or say you can say dysentery so this is heat stable resistant to the gastric acid coming to the effect of antibiotic on fecal excretion if we start a patient that has the enteric fever as well as sigella species infection if we start the antibiotic what will the effect obviously if we start the antibiotic from sigella the sigella is a local infection that will get cured and there will be a, the reduction the, the shortens the duration of emission of sigella bacteria in the stool whereas this in in the salmonella species actually they excrete from the stool the antibiotic which will give will cure from the systemic circulation so their duration the prolonged duration will still maintain the bacteria will still release from the stool for a prolonged period of time in case of typhoid and other salmonella species infection only sigella species there will be the certain duration of the bacteria excretion in the feces or in your stool when we start the antibiotic coming to the immune immune response this salmonella will have the primarily monocytes where salmonella or typhi and other than typhi will have neutrophil dis in a disseminated disease infection response whereas this sigella since this is a particularly confined to your intestine only there will only primarily neutrophilic infiltration talking moving forward there will be the gi manifestation salmonella that is enteric fever will have first constipation followed by the diarrhea this gastroenteritis do develop diarrhea few or possibly there may might be a bloody but in case of sigella species they will develop abdomen crampy pain tenesmus bloody mucus stool so there will be a blood mixed with the stool this is known as the bacillary dysentery so this will develop diarrhea obviously mucus mucus with bloody diarrhea there will be diarrhea but less likely there will be a chances of bloody but less likely bloody this will be a initially constipation followed by the diarrhea so typhoid salmonella typhi will develop constipation then diarrhea this is the diarrheal will develop this will develop diarrhea but that will be a bloody diarrhea mainly with the mucus that is called bacillary dysentery talking about the vaccine if you talk about the this salmonella typhi they have the vaccine and these are the oral vaccine contain life attenuated salmonella typhi that is im vaccine contains vi capsular polysaccharide so two type of vaccine is there that is oral and im and oral is live attenuated whereas the im is the vi capsular polysaccharide for other salmonella other than typhi we did not have developed the vaccine in case of sigella also there is no vaccine has been developed talking about the unique property the salmonella typhi actually I have the unique property like this causes the typhoid fever that you have know that's develop the rose spot abdomen constipation abdominal pain fever pulse temperature dissociation this is known as the relative bradycardia so they can develop typhoid fever rose spot and abdomen constipation abdominal pain fever this is relative bradycardia which is known as the pulse temperature dissociation actually when the there is a one degree increase in the, your body temperature there will be a 10 degree fluctuation increase in your heart rate 10 bits per minute so one degree temperature 10 dicks bits per minute will be the actual this is the proportion should be raised when you have a fever but in case of this typhoid fever you have a high fever the but your heart rate is a normal so this indicates there is a not physiologically there should be increase in heart rate but heart rate has not been increased so this is called the relative bradycardia or pulse temperature dissociation this is present characteristic feature of your typhoid fever so there may be uh, later GI ulceration and hemorrhage treat with the ceftriaxone or fluoroquinolone in a carrier state they can is may be in the gallbladder which requires longer treatment for months of ciprofloxacin treatment may be required or say long term treatment required if there is colonization in the gallbladder mainly we give 5 to 10 days of the antibiotics for typhoid fever talking about the non typhoidal salmonella infection that is due to from the poultry eggs pets and Turtles are the common source that cause this 
gastroenteritis, non-salmonella. The antibiotics are not indicated usually. Gastroenteritis is usually caused by non-typhoidal salmonella. Talking about the Sigella, Sigella can be transmitted from the finger, flies, food and feces. So this 4F can be remembered for the transmission of this Sigella species through the finger. The flies, house flies can transfer this through the food, the Sigella can be transferred and through the fecal, orofecal contamination, this can be transferred. In order of decreasing severity, lex toxin production, Sigella dysentery, Sigella flexionary, Sigella boidi and Sigella sony, these are the four species of this Sigella. Invasion of the M cell is a key of pathogenicity organism that produce little toxin can cause disease. So the important point of this is they have they can transmit from one cell to another by the actin polymerization. So they doesn't come out the Sigella species and they usually doesn't get killed by the humoral antibody you can say. Okay. So we have talked about the some of the key distinguishing feature of these three species. This, this information will be mainly played to form a scenario and then ask you a question and from this information only we can able to answer our questions on board. We can even uh, put you additional information and they, then we, you can see over here. So if you see the salmonella infection, salmonella infection, almost any kind of food or beverage can carry bacteria that cause salmonella infection, although meat and egg are the most common source. So you have to remember meat, mainly chickens, they will talk about the imported from the Asia or, and they are develop the symptoms. Then you have think they are talking about this salmonella, mainly resistant salmonella. Salmonella pathogenesis, contaminated food or drink, progress bacteremia, travel to small intestine, adhere to the lining, begin the life cycle in severe case, bacteria break through the intestine wall to the blood stream can be deadly if not properly treatment treated symptoms 12 to 72 hours nausea vomiting fever diarrhea abdominal cramp 4 to 7 days their illness mild from mild to severe most people recover without treatment severe case most likely in fine elderly people impaired the immune system treatment with oral or injectable antibiotic you can see this is the uh, enteric fever due to the salmonella typhi. In first week, they will develop the bacteremia. In the second week, they will be widespread to the retinal nuclear system, focal foci of necrosis in the liver, and splenomegaly will be there. In third week, if not treated, there will be ulceration of the pear patches, intestinal bleeding, and intestinal ulceration. If not treated, then again it goes into the fourth stage, whereas the colonization, the gallbladder, chronic carrier state, chronic infection may involve the joint, bone, meninges, and other side. So this this is the week wise enteric fever symptoms are say progressive they can be like fever malice diffuse abdominal pain diarrhea constipation caused by salmonella typhi in due to be ingestion of contaminated food or drink dairy products selfish say the patient will develop white coating on a top rose spot macular lesion on the abdominal chest also in the intestine micro reaction in the ilia enlargement of the spleen and lymph node measuring lymph node so there will be a, a finger and mouth contact with feces and urine has leads to this infection so you can see over you can even see this this uh, mean initial time we do the widal test then there will be the blood culture actually so the blood culture will be positive mostly so that is the must be focused they can be done the fecal culture then, then we can do a urine culture even bone marrow culture and widal test so these are the way we can diagnose the enteric fever Coming to the Sigella, we can see the Sigella infection is the intestinal epithelium cell where the Sigella species had infected us and they spread from one, one cell to another by actin pollinators. And you can see they have elongated this, they have formed this pseudoform elongation and then after elongation they transport this bacteria and this by this they, they can spread from one cell to another and they evade, they escape from the this antibody mediated killing. So this can be seen in the Sigella species. Now let's come to this Kaplan book where we will discuss about this our uh, little revise this Kaplan microbiological of USMLE some certain feature like Salmonella enterica this has distinguished feature they are gram negative rod highly motile due to with the BI capsule they are facultative anaerobe non lactose fermenting we know about this they are S2S production we have discussed in this um, our USMLE step one uh, it's just recently we have discussed they are S2S production both salmonella species Sigella doesn't especially identifying with the biochemical reaction sensitive to acid so this they require high load for getting us to cause infection reservoir they are human only no animal reservoir the key being act will be the patient with fever or abdominal pain typhoid fever travel to the endemic area that will be a key point they are gram negative encapsulated non-lactose fermenting 
and they are oxidase negative and they are H2S production. Vital test will be positive. Blood culture, you see the non-fermenting pale coloring grow on the macronchiaga. Transmission is fecal oral route from the human carrier. Gallbladder can be the carrier. Due decreased stomach acid or impairment of the mononuclear cell in the sickle cell disease produced to the salmonella infection. So there will be a decreased stomach acid that will may reduce the, your load to cause you infection and a patient who have decreased mononuclear cell like sickle cell anemia they will predispose to this salmonella infection if you remember osteomyelitis the main bug to cause osteomyelitis is staphylococcus aureus in every patient if you talk about any person adult children um, elderly people staph aureus is the first organism that cause osteomyelitis but if you talk about this sickle cell anemia disease, then salmonella is the species, salmonella is the bacteria that causes the osteomyelitis. Most common cause of osteomyelitis in sickle cell patient is due to salmonella because they have impaired of the mononuclear cell. Pathogenesis, they will develop the typhoid fever called enteric fever uh, and in the milder form they will develop paratyphoid fever. The infection begins in the ileocecal region, first constipation. Then the host cell membrane ruffle from the salmonella contact, salmonella rich basolateral site of the M cell, then mesenteric lymph nodes and then the blood. Blood, there will be the transient septicemia, then at one week, 80% of the patient, blood culture will be positive, 25% will have the rose spot, that is trunk, untrunk and abdomen and sign of septicemia. Salmonella typhi survives intracellularly and replicates in the macrophage, resistant to the macrophage killing. This is important because the decrease of the fusion of lysosome with the phagosome. So they inhibit the fusion of this lysosome and phagosome and because of that they can easily survive in the macrophage. They also, they have all defensing that allows with this time the oxygen dependent and oxygen independent killing. So they have this mechanism to get to prevent them from killing by our immune cell. So they inhibit the phagolysosome fusion and they also withstand this oxygen dependent and oxygen dependent killing in our blood in our body by week 3 85 percent of the stool culture are positive symptoms are fever headache abdominal pain constipation more common than diarrhea complication if untreated remains necrosis of the pear patches with perforation thrombophilitis cholecystitis pneumonia abscess permission etc the diagnosis organisms can be isolated from the blood bone marrow urine and tissue biopsy from the rose spot if present Antibiotics like Weddell test can be done to the O, V, I, N, S antigen in the patient's cell and can be detected by agglutination, that is Weddell test. So, coming to the treatment, we have fluoroquinolol and third generation cephalosporin to treat this bug. Even we have this uh, uh, vaccination, and the vaccination is three vaccines are available. Attenuated oral vaccine of salmon type is uh, strength 21, the TY21. There are parental killed vaccine as well, that is no longer used in USA, and parental. BICPS polysaccharide capsule is also present. So this is about the salmonella typhi. If you talk about the salmonella non-typhi 